In this video, listen in to a panel of veteran adjusters and claims professionals from the IA firm Crawford & Company. Learn which licenses are important, how to manage your gear as a field adjuster, why the best adjusters answer their phones during cat season, and so much more, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Adjuster TV is brought to you by Paysetter Claim Service. Learn more at adjustertv.com slash paysetter. e &O provider Kaplik. Download the free insurance for adjusters guide at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And by Crawford Catastrophe Services. Hey, Matt here with Adjuster TV. And for the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Hit the bell notification so that you never miss a video like this one. Me and Max Olson were invited to cover the Crawford Cat Conference in Orlando, Florida. It's only the first day, but some of the most critical information for new adjusters was dropped in the opening session. And the information that was shared in this short panel discussion is so good that we decided to include it in full here. If you're a new adjuster, I guarantee you've got some of these questions, so pay attention. The theme of the entire conference is preparedness. Um, so we thought we should bring up some of our industry experts to talk through what that means. Buddy, let's start with you. Uh, let's give, if you could give me some insights into how you would prepare specifically for deploying in the field. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Andy. Um, hello again, Buddy Sheets, Director of CAT Operations here. Um, I know in this room we got a lot of brand new adjusters that maybe have not been on a field deployment yet or a desk deployment. Um, we also have probably a lot of veteran adjusters in here that have prepared for many seasons. And what the veteran adjusters will tell you is what you do early in the year is going gonna, is gonna to determine your success when the storm hits. Um, there's a lot of things that you can do. We'll go through them today. Licensing is one of those things that you don't want to wait on. Um, I've seen a lot of adjusters in the past that will get their home state license, and then they wait for emergency license to kick in when a storm hits. Well, I'm telling you, if you wait for emergency license every time, there's going to be times when the storm maybe doesn't get quite big enough um, and the state doesn't enact emergency licensing. If they don't enact emergency licensing and you don't have that license, trying to apply for it late is going to be a, a recipe for disaster because sometimes that state will start getting bogged down with licenses and they can't get those licenses issued. Desk operation is a little bit different than field. If you're deployed to a state, that's essentially the only license you need at that point, right? If you're in the field, you need the Louisiana license to work Hurricane Ida because that's where you're deployed to. At the desk, Hurricane Ida affected many states. The desk is the one that's going to work all those states. I carry 34 licenses and I don't ask any of my managers to acquire a license I don't have because there aren't any. I do encourage every one of them to acquire as many licenses as possible because that's what's going to keep you behind in that seat. You become valuable. This is your business. Some, a speaker earlier alluded to your business. This is your business. This is the most inexpensive business license you will ever purchase and it is an investment in your business. The more licenses you have, the more claims you can work the more valuable Crawford becomes because now we can cover the full gamut of states that are out there that have been affected by a catastrophe. So number one for a desk adjuster is licensure. I encourage you to take advantage of Crawford's offer to help you get the New York State license. That is a critical license right now because not very many people carry that license. It is an, an additional test to your home state license. It requires a bond. It requires a stack of paperwork about this thick every two years, but it's worth it. It kept me working for two straight years, and I was the only person that had that license. So my question was, why don't you have it? <laughs> Go get those licenses. It'll keep you working. New York's a gold mine ticket, too. Over, over on the flood side, it's a little bit different because we're working with the federal level. And uh, one of the challenges we ran into last year, uh, you can only renew during the, from January to the end of May. 
and we had some adjusters that just didn't realize that their, that their certification with NFIP had expired. And so they were basically out of the game for the rest of the year. You couldn't go back and do anything about it. You've got a time frame you have to work with. Um, and, and the theme of, of what we're doing today is preparedness, and that, that's one of the things that adjusters really need to be doing right now. On our side with flood, you need to be prepared, you need to have the FEMA documentation in your vehicle ready to go. I mean, how many, how many of you are at actually interested in flood? Is anybody in here interested in flood? Just a couple people. So if those of you that are gentlemen that were using the restroom off of here just uh, after the break and noticed there was a bit of a water problem, uh, did you have the documents in your vehicle to be able to handle that claim right now? I mean, that's, it's, that, it's silly, but it's that quick. And by the way, that wasn't a covered peril with NFIP. Um, <laughs> but, you know, I always had a ready bag. I actually had luggage with all of my shirts in it, all my pants in it, socks, underwear. I had all of my documentation, and it sat over in a corner. I washed it when I came home. It was sitting there ready, and it was ready to go. So when the, the call came in, I was on the road because I'm trying to get paperwork, talk to insured. I don't have time to take care of those, those things that need to be taken care of before you leave. You have to have somebody be able to do that because your ability to deploy right away is gonna have a direct impact on your future deployments. Going out and getting your Xactimate level two certification is almost become an imperative these days. When I've had several clients call me and say, hey, we wanna deploy 20 people and we want them all level two certified and exact. Well, if you're, if you're, if you're not level two, if you just have the level one, you won't qualify for that deployment. Um, if you are level <coughs> two certified, you need to make sure that we know Make sure that your Renovo profile is updated with that information because when we start pulling lists to deploy, we're going to look at people that have that level two certification. Um, rope and harness is another big one. You know that we have rope and harness deployments. I know where they'll send people out, and you know how it is these days with the neighborhoods. They're building these houses with these roofs that are just ridiculous because everybody wants to have that bonus room, you know, up above that garage, so they got to bring the roof up. Um, a lot of those roofs, you, can't, you just can't walk on them. You, so um, if you have that rope and harness certification, you're gonna be that much more apt to get a deployment with that. So obviously licensing, certification, all of these things are extremely important, but could we, could we take um, one step back? What, how should we prepare for the actual deployment? So I get the phone call, and I'm ready to go, I have my license, what, what should I be doing to be ready ahead of time so I can be on the road almost immediately? So I'll start with that one. Um, I used to keep a go box in my room. It was just like one of those <coughs> black toolboxes like you put in the back of your truck. And I had an inventory list in there um, with everything that I needed. And what I would do is, after I'd been working hurricanes or you know winter storms or whatever, I go through that list. I check my inventory. I go in my box. Anything that I've used all of, I replace it. I check my tape measures. A lot of times, you know, your tape measure can get water in it. You don't realize it, and the next time you try to use it, it won't roll back up because it's got rusted on the inside. Anything that needs to be replaced, replace it now. You know, make sure that that box is that is just self-contained and when it's time to go you can grab that box and throw it in your truck and then head to the storm. Um, anything from reams of paper, pens and pencils, highlighters, um, you know, make sure that all of your stuff is in one place and you can grab it. I'd say have two of everything, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, two. Two tape measures, two cameras, you'll be out with that, that moonshot or Mars shot on that picture earlier and you're nowhere near a hardware store, the big box store to go get a tape measure. I've had it happen, so. Batteries, water. Make yeah. sure you've got water to go with you because you get out to areas and it's, they're sold out of water. You need water. You gotta hydrate because generally hot where you're going. Yeah, gas cans. I mean, I don't know how many of you worked in Ida, but the gas situation was critical down there this year. And we had guys that were filling up five gallon gas cans and loading them in the back of their truck just so they could get back out. You know, driving three hours in to look at claims and. and running out of gas, you know, can't get gas down there. Think about things like that. Um, and, and just like I say, do all that stuff now, early in the year. Don't wait until you get the call because some of you may live in some of those affected areas. And if you try to wait to go get equipment after you get the call, 
Well, we know what happens after hurricanes. Stuff starts selling out everywhere, you can't find anything. Um, and the, or the prices start shooting up and you pay way more than you're supposed to. So. So, so, Buddy, you touched on a lot of things that are very specific to being deployed in the field, in the disaster area. So, Pam, from your perspective, these people are off-site mm -hmm. somewhere else in the country, whether they're at home or in a building, for, in Allen, for example. So how, how should those people prepare differently than a field deployment? Well, a desk deployment is very different. You don't need your ladder. You don't need your cougar paws. You don't need your own computer because we're going to provide that. Um, what you need to be able to do, though, is get in the car and deploy. There's a man sitting in this room that we call him the all-star of desk deployments. Mr. Jim Johnson, I called him. I needed him the next morning. He lives here. I'm in Allen, Texas. While I'm on the phone with him, his wife's throwing his go bag in the car and kicking him out the door. <laughs> so he finishes the call with me on route to Allen, Texas. He was there in record time. So we made him our poster child and Allen because so many times you're not ready. Oh, well, I got to get my oil changed. Oh, wait, I need my brakes done. Oh, I don't have my clothes ready. Get your stuff together now so that when you do get that call, because most everyone's going to have to deploy for a small amount of time to a location other than your home. For those of you who are veteran adjusters and who have worked from home for us before, maybe not, but maybe so. You just need to be prepared for either contingency because that's what we do. We're adjusters and we go to where we're needed. And sometimes you're needed in a place that's not where the storm hit. But sometimes you are where the storm hit, and I'm going to call you to come to me. So just be prepared either way. You just need less to be a desk adjuster than you need to be a field adjuster. We're going to have water. We're going to have electricity. You will need a hotel room or a B&B, &B or you're going to pull your RV. Everybody does it differently, but that's OK. Um, you just need to be ready to come when we call because the people that can get there the fastest, those are the ones that are going to be deployed now. And then if I need somebody later on, those people who, well, they needed to get their brakes done, well, somebody else already has their brakes done. They're going to get here before you. They took your seat. So just understand that. Our job is to respond to our client's needs, and our client needs adjusters right now. I do have a question for you. Yes, sir. Have you ever worn a pair of cougar paws? I have, actually. <laughs> One they are size 11s, but I have worn them. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I want to bring up, uh, and Pam kind of touched on it with your vehicle, are uh, there's another thing, another piece that people don't think about in preparing for storms is, is personal matters, right? I can tell you that all of my vision appointments, dental appointments, doctor's appointments all occur within January and February still to this day. I'm not in the field anymore, but that's just how I set it up because I want to knock all of those appointments out early in the year because the last thing you want to do is be on a deployment and you got a doctor's appointment coming up and you got a release because you got to go home to go to this doctor's appointment. Vet appointments for your dogs. Make sure you get all that done early in the year. You want to make sure that that storm season from June 1st, you know, through the really the end of October is fairly clear of appointments that you can help. Now, we understand that there there's issues that come up, but anything that you can take care of now, take care of it now. The other the other side of that, too, is that the financial side, you need to prepare yourself financially because you're going to be laying some money out while you're waiting to get your commissions done. So you've got hotel, you've got gas, you've got food. Don't go out there without any money thinking that you're going to get paid in two days. You need to prepare for that. So Richard, is, is there anything specific to flood that's different from, from what we've already discussed? Well, in flood, once you get into flood, um, property deployments generally, they bring you to a centralized area, and then you, you go through orientations and, and deploy from there. Flood, we generally send you directly out to the site. You're going to just travel from your home directly out to the site, but you need to be able to get out there right away because we have requirements through FEMA that we have to be there. We're supposed to be on the ground within 48 hours at the site. You have to contact the insured within 24 hours. 
you do not have time to be running around doing oil changes when you're supposed to be on the telephone calling the insured and all that information is recorded. They know what it is. They hold us accountable for it. So flood is like, go, you need to be able to go right now. So. Hey, Richard, um, <clears throat> I talked about some of the certifications for the, you know, in our camp and Buddy and Tom's camp, but uh, I didn't want to touch on the flood certification. I mean, I saw several people raise their hand out right. here that are interested. Could you maybe <clears throat> explain that process to them? So in order to work flood, you don't have to have a, a well, you, you'll start out with one state license, but you don't have to have a license in that state. It's federal, so it's, it supersedes all the state licensing. However, you have to have, to get the FCN card, you, they require four years of experience as an adjuster. You need to be able to write a claim up to $500,000, and you just need to be able to know how to write that claim. You have to attend an NFIP presentation. If you have not received your FCN and you're going to apply for it this year, so let's say you have your four years and you meet those requirements, you have to go to an NFIP presentation. We're doing our presentation on Thursday, but if you're a first-time adjuster, you have to go through the currently online version with the NFIP, which is through H2O Partners. It's an entire day class. It usually runs on Tuesdays or Thursdays. Um, if, uh, if you're just renewing your license, you attend on Thursday, and that's, that'll, that will be fine. Yeah, and, and to, to go off of that also with the training scenario, everybody in this room has to do continuing education. You know, what usually it's once every two years, you gotta have probably 30 hours or however many hours. Um, get your continuing education done now because you don't wanna be in the middle of a deployment juggling claims and then you look up and, oh man, my Texas license is expiring in July. I'm out on a cat and now I gotta do 30 hours or I'm gonna get fined by the state of Texas. So go in and get those, get all of your continuing education done right now, as well as go through and kind of brush up on, on construction techniques. Things change from time to time. You may be going into an area where they have different building codes because of wind loads that come in, you know. Um, so you can start going ahead and looking at some of those states like Louisiana, um, you know, Florida, some that have some of these upgraded building codes and familiarizing yourself with that so that when you come into the area, you'll already know what you're looking for. And for flood, we do, uh, we have a class that's called FAST, Flood Adjuster Specialized Training. We're doing uh, that two-day online class uh, every month going forward. That basically gets you back up to speed on what's current in NFIP, what's happening with that, also carrier specific with the, the client that we handle so that you understand the specifics of that because this particular client does things a little bit differently than the rest of uh, the flood industry does right now. Um, so and we'll be expanding that to include some other classes specific to flood too. And if you deploy to the desk, we're going to do um, deployment specific training once you arrive the first two days that you're on site will pretty much be orientation and training for that specific catastrophe um, in Allen we are specific to one carrier so you will get oriented to their processes and procedures and generally we have a really good idea of what kind of claims we're going to be handling so we'll do very specific training based on the kind of claims that we're expecting at that point so just come prepared to be inundated with the information. Uh, you'll need to be ready to absorb that. So as much rest as you can get now, you better take it. <laughs> and I can tell you um, along those same lines, um, I know when I started, I was one carrier. Um, and that's the only carrier I knew. And the first time that I went out on a, on a field deployment and it was with a carrier outside of my known, it was a very stressful situation for me. I knew that carrier and I knew how they did things, but I was, I was really concerned that I, you know, it was gonna be too new. On our side of the house, we deal with those clients outside of the main two you know, that we've been discussing. Um, we're gonna bring you to a location. We're gonna have that same storm specific orientation. We're gonna tell you about the carrier we're gonna, we're gonna go over the guidelines. We're gonna give you all of that information. So what I don't want anybody to feel is, just because I've been working this one carrier for the last two years, I can't work any other carriers because I don't know the carrier. 
um, we're going to provide that support to you and we're going to bring you in and, and make sure that you're ready and we're going to provide continued support throughout the entire deployment. So th this can be just a question for anyone that, that wants to, to answer, but how, what, what should be expected as far as getting the deployment? So I, I demonstrated earlier um, our air kit capabilities, sending a text message, responding back to that. But, but how may that be different um, for different deployments, different carriers? What, what can be expected um, for uh, when that communication comes across and how to handle that? Well, the first thing is, and this is a rule that everybody goes through that my FACP classes, answer your phone. Hardest thing in the world is getting a hold of an adjuster doesn't answer the phone. I don't recognize that number. It's probably about a warranty. If it's cat season, you better just pick up the phone and just listen to that recording if you have to, because in this day and age, we don't work with that centralized phone anymore. It's the people that we're using are using cell phones. You're probably not going to recognize it. You need to answer the phone. And it's really um, important that you do that for the, the policyholder too. Don't ignore those calls. Uh, that, that sets a, a, a bad precedent with the policyholder, so answer the phones with that. Um, we'll reach out to you, we'll start out. We, we have to qualify and make sure you're capable of handling the deployment. So Flood's a little bit more hands-on with reaching out to everybody and talking to them. Um, most important thing is keep Renovo up to date. You know, any kind of license that's updated, you don't understand how much we rely on the information that is in Renovo to get you deployed. If your phone number's bad, your email's bad, it says that your FCN card is out of date, you're not going to get called. You need to keep that up to date. Yeah, absolutely. Renovo is, is, is critical. Key. Um, use your I want to work button <laughs> for sure. Uh, so we have just a few more minutes. Um, do we want to take some questions? Sure. sure. Do you, buddy, you were talking about uh, keeping Renovo up to date. Uh, how important is it uh, for your resume to be there? It's extremely important because a lot of times clients may have a specific thing that they're looking for, an amount of, amount of uh, work experience and years. If we can pull that resume, and I even have clients that say, hey, send me the resumes. You know, and we need 10 people with this, this experience and I need to see their resume. So if your resume is not in there, more than likely I'm going to go to the next person and pull that resume. Um, because a lot of times we're on a time crunch and we don't have time to, to call, hey, can you email me your resume? And he said, well, I'll get it to you when I get home. Um, or I got to update it or whatever. So keep your resume up to date. Keep it in the system. Very important. My question is about licensing. So along with your home state, and New York is the golden key, is there a specific or suggested list of the next states to get? Some of the most important states for storm season, uh, hurricane season, are going to be the coastal states, the Gulf Coast, and then the eastern seaboard. Those are your hot hurricane states. We're rolling into hail season, so you're going to want Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, and then across that corridor to the East Coast, because those are the states that are going to get hit hard with hail. And those are generally the states that we're working um, going into this time of year. The, the other thing I was going to say is if, you, if we reach out to you for a deployment, give us a yes or no answer. Don't say let me get back to you, because we're moving on. We've got to find, we have to get these positions filled. And the last thing you ever want to do is say yes to us and then come back and say, I changed my mind. Because the wheels are running with the carrier. We've already started the onboarding process for you. They're spending time and effort getting you onboarded. And if you come back and you say, yeah, no, I'm going to do something else, it's, it's not going to be good for you. Right. Very important. Like, like Richard said, if you're asked to deploy and you accept the deployment, deploy and finish the deployment. Um, you know, we, I can't tell you how many times we have people that will deploy on a desk deployment or a field deployment and they're there three or four days a week and then they disappear. Um, you don't want that on your, you don't want that on your record. So if you deploy with us, stay deployed, you know, it, now we understand also things happen. Um, you know, you work with your manager if you have some kind of issue, but um, do everything you can to finish your deployment in good standing. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't finish your claims, we consider it an abandonment. 
the carrier considers it an abandonment, and then they'll take steps to make sure it doesn't happen to them ever again. This is Adjuster TV.